Well, these days, drones are everywhere. They could have been under your Christmas tree. If you were one of the unfortunate people in Gatwick, they were one of the reasons that you were stuck there. But they are also increasingly being used for industrial applications. Today on PowerShift, we're looking at a Vancouver-based startup that uses drones to map changes in the environment and to wildlife. Take a look at some of the footage. The company's founder says drones haven't even begun to scratch the surface of the technology when it comes to the potential for environmental mapping. Joining us from Vancouver is Nathan Vadebonker, president and founder of Smart Shores. Nathan, thank you so much for being with us. So talk to us just about this notion of environmental mapping first. What is that? How is it different from traditional mapping? Yeah, environmental mapping with drones is the same as traditional mapping, but a lot cheaper and a lot higher resolution. So with drones, you can go out on demand. Um, you can fly a site in maybe 20 minutes to an hour, depending how big it is, and get really high resolution images and elevations of a, an area. So you can map habitats down to the individual plant, for example. And, and so what are you looking for um, that is different from you know, different industrial applications of drone use? What we're looking to do is make the types of expensive environmental mapping that are usually reserved for hydrological studies and uh, bigger um, infrastructure projects and making that accessible to community groups and small not-for-profits. So by using drones that might cost $2,000, which are a lot cheaper than planes, um, we can get people out to site um, really quickly, we can fly an area and we can integrate different types of environmental data with these maps to help monitor things like invasive species um, or the pollutants in soils. So give us an example of a project you've worked on. You know, what were the cost savings that you were able to pass on uh, through the customer? And, and, you know, what was the value add you provided to the client? One of the most um, common things that we're called out to do is to map estuaries, which are the regions where rivers flow into the sea, these flat, low-lying areas that are really important to the marine food web, but out in, in hard-to-access uh, places. So we'll go up to northern Vancouver Island or the north and central coast and we'll go out, we'll fly an estuary, it will collect some data then come back in. And so for us it's a cost of getting someone out to the field, having them fly around and walk around the site for a day or two, um, which might be on the order of uh, several thousand dollars compared to a plane outfit with millions of dollars of expensive equipment that has to fly all the way up, fly around and come back on a mission. So it's a very uh, very different scale and uh, the costs are usually, uh, if it's something like that, a few percent of uh, what they might be otherwise. Could you use your drones for uh, rapid response or, or rapid detection of pending environmental disasters? Yeah, I'm thinking about you know, the concerns over pipelines and possible spills mm -hmm. going undetected. Uh, could drones be a potential solution there? One of the great things that drones can do is deploy really quickly to help identify these kinds of uh, the kinds of risks and crisis situations like oil spills. So let's say we had um, an oil spill that was being monitored somewhere along uh, the coast. If we had the people out who were deploying the booms to try and collect the oil uh, with drones, they can launch a drone from a, a small boat, fly around, and help guide the people who are out there trying to control the spill so they can understand where and, uh, uh, and how quickly to deploy uh, the kinds of absorption and uh, uh, oil uh, flow slowing uh, equipment. And and when you're you're setting up this company, how long have you guys been at this? We've been at this for about two years, and what we've been focused on is using uh, higher end consumer drones and building software that helps make sense of the data that they produce. So drones produce lots of data. And this is great because it gives us a lot of insights into what's going on in our environment, but it takes a lot of time and uh, and expense when it comes time to paying people to sort through these data and make sense of it. So we've been working on systems that help automate um, the analysis of this really fine scale data. So for example, you can go and fly a forest stand with a million trees. And instead of having to sort out a way to assess the health of each individual tree, um, we're developing um, algorithms that will identify each tree, its height, um, how wide the trunk is, and different measures of its health so you can get these automatic um, measures of really large-scale uh, environmental data, but on a you know, per plant or per tree basis. What are you seeing on the ground when it comes to the effects of climate change? In the coastal areas in BC, we're seeing something called coastal squeeze, which is where as the sea level rises, um, the environments that 
are in the intertidal area and this, this beach coastline are getting squeezed up against hard infrastructure like roads and dikes and buildings. So in a normal environmental, um, or I guess a natural uh, environment, the coast will just move further inland and all the habitats will just migrate that way and everything will, will maintain itself pretty well. But in urban areas, which are a lot of, built in a lot of really environmental sensitive sites like the Fraser Delta, uh, sea level rise pushes these environmental communities further inland but then up against dikes and roads and they just erode away and disappear. So one of the things that we've been doing is helping to map uh, these areas so we can better understand how sea level rise will affect them and plan for environmental restoration and management that can maintain these important ecological areas uh, near cities. When you look at um, your clientele, it seems like a lot of community and conservation type of groups. Do you foresee mm -hmm. having more um, industrial clients who are looking to do developments, build major projects, but will be able to do it with an added environmental sensitivity? Absolutely. I think people are, are getting a lot more um, uh, aware of the kinds of environmental effects building near shorelines can have, especially with all the discussion about climate change and sea level rise over the past 10 years. And uh, there's a lot of developers that are, are really interested in building these sustainable communities. That means not just building uh, a big dike next to uh, uh, the ocean or putting uh, you know, a bunch of rocks to attenuate waves, but looking at more natural landscapes. And one of the great things drones can do is they can assess what kind of uh, habitats are in a site provide different elevations and different volumes of sediment, beach, uh, whatever it may be, and help plan really specific uh, and help cost out really specific measures to help build a safe flood proof or at least flood resistant environment while at the same time maintaining important ecological features. Nathan, thank you so much for joining us. Nathan Vadabankur, president and founder of Smart Shores.